Let me invite you to take your scriptures and turn with me to Psalm number 65. Psalm number 65. And I want to look at one verse of scripture as a text verse. Uh, this first uh, Sunday evening in the year 2018. For some reason, uh, this time of year, we think about new things, and uh, new things are really nice. And probably the reason we think about new things is because it is a new year, and uh, this time of year, there's a lot of people who make what we call New Year's resolutions. Has anybody made any of those? I learned to quit making those years ago because I break them quicker than I make them. But uh, a lot of people do that. And probably one of the biggest resolutions that anybody makes is I'm going to lose weight this year. And uh, the weight loss people really advertise this time of year. Notice if you will, Verse 11 as our text verse. It says, Thou crownest the year with thy goodness. Man, that's a blessing right there. That God will give us a new year and He crowns it with His goodness. And thy paths drop fatness. That means blessings. Let's pray. Father, thank You so much that we can look at your word and glean from its truth. And as we look at these few things that you uh, have shown me, I pray that we'll take them to heart and instill them into our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. I do want to share with you uh, some thoughts about newness. The Bible has a lot to say about newness. It really does. Uh, I did not have the time to really get into all of the research that I wanted to do as far as finding uh, some of the things that the Bible has to say about newness, but I found several passages of Scripture that kind of jumped out at me, and I want to read just a few of them to you before we get into the message of the hour. But uh, over in Ezekiel chapter 11, verse number 19, listen to what the Bible says. And I will give them one heart, and I will put a new spirit within you. I will put a new spirit within you. And then, of course, in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, that very familiar passage of Scripture that we especially use uh, when trying to point people to the gospel of the Lord Jesus. That scripture says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. And in Galatians chapter 6, verse 15, the Bible says, For in Christ Jesus neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but a new creature. Ephesians 2.15, listen. Having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, for to make in himself of twain one new man, so making peace. And then one other scripture, Ephesians 4. 24, and that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Just a few scriptures that talk about newness. Well, every day, as I've already mentioned to you, is a new day. And every morning that you get out of your bed, God has blessed you with a new day. A day that you can start over. A day that you can begin afresh. A day that 
that, that, that is new and fresh. And you can begin by living godly in Christ Jesus and walking closer to the Lord. 2018 has started and God has blessed us and given to us a new year. The question is, what will we do in this new year? Now, I want us to look at this from a perspective of what we will do individually, but also want us to look at this from the perspective of what we can do as a church family. There are seven things that I want to share with you as I begin to, to think about God giving to us a new start. Well, now, what do you think that we need to do, preacher? Well, first of all, I believe that we need to begin uh, with a clean heart. We need to begin a new start with a clean heart. One of the most important things that you and I can do as we get up out of our beds each and every morning is examine ourselves. Now, I must confess to you that it's a very easy thing for us to examine everybody else. And usually that's just exactly what we do. We examine everybody else and we see all of their faults and their failures. But as we begin this new year, I want to challenge you to get up every morning and examine your own life. And if you'll do that, I believe that you will find some things in your life that you're just not pleased with. And whenever you begin to see those things in your life that you're not pleased with, the next step is to have a God heartfelt talk with the Lord Jesus Christ and confess your sin. Uh, you know, a lot of people live their lives as though they have no sin. The list of changes need to be made. Take you out a piece of paper whenever you begin to examine yourself and you see some things in your life that you don't like. Uh, take you out a piece of paper and begin to list those things and begin to work on those things one step at a time. And listen, a lot of people can multitask. I must confess, I'm not good at that. Every now and then, my little wife, bless her heart, she'll give me one job to do over here and then want me to go over there and do another job. And she can do that. I've watched her. She's frying an egg with this hand and whipping up something else in a pot with her other hand. She can do that, but I can't do that. And usually whenever she tells me to do something with this hand and then turns around and gives me something else to do with this hand, what I usually say to you, honey, one thing at a time, and that done well is a very good tale, as many can tell. Miss Lee, fourth grade teacher. <laughs> That's what I always say to her. And she's got to where she says, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> but listen, make your list. And start at the top of your list. And when you get past number one, then go to number two. And begin to work on, when I preach, how do you know I'm going to have two things on my list? Odds are you're going to have more than two. Things on your list that you need to work on. Now, listen. Ask the Lord to reveal the things that need to be put on your list to you. Uh, begin with a clean heart. Lord, what do I need to do to have a clean heart that will be pleasing to you? Ask the Lord to reveal unacknowledged problems to your mind and to your heart so that you can put them on your list. When I preach you how do I need to handle my list, as I begin to work through my list, what do I need to do? Well, the first thing you need to do is confess. The Bible says in uh, 1 John chapter 1, verse 9, that if we confess our sin, our faults, those things that we may have put on our list to improve on, if we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So the first thing that we need to do 
in this new year is to begin this year with a clean heart. Secondly, the second thing that I feel like we need to do in this new year is we need to accept responsibility. Now, we're good at pointing fingers. We really are. How many of you have ever pointed a finger? Blame somebody else for something. Now, this is not pick on Mar tonight because she gets even real quick. I want you to know that. <laughs> this is not pick on Mar tonight because she gets even real quick. But now I want to tell you something. I enjoy Every now and then she'll look at me and she'll say, where is so-and-so in this house? And I'll say, I don't know. I've not touched it. I haven't moved it. There's not but two of us that live here, and I know that I didn't touch it. Somebody did. Somebody did. <laughs> but I mean, the fact is, we need to reach a place in our life that we expect we accept the responsibility for what we do. Now, a lot of times we try to blame somebody else for what we've done. Quit blaming other people about things that happened in your past. Get past your past. Yesterday is gone. Today is a new day. Get past your past. Quit playing the blame game or the circumstances of your life will continue. You'll continue to live as a failure. And God doesn't want you to be a failure. So accept the responsibilities for your past and then get past your past and move forward in this new year. Number three. Set yourself new goals for the new year. Set yourself new goals for the new year. Now, anytime you set a goal, your goal should be a challenging goal. But it ought to be a practical goal. A goal that you know that you probably can reach. But you don't need to make your goal so easy that you're going to reach it and say, well, I did really well on this. Uh, set yourself a goal. Make it a challenging goal. But be practical with your goal. Higher than you know you could accomplish without the Lord's help. Did you hear me? Set your goal higher then you could accomplish yourself knowing that you couldn't do it without the Lord's help. You see, we always need the Lord's help. But yet consistent, listen, with the gifts that God has given you. Every one of you, you've got a gift. Use that gift in setting your goals. Do those things that God has gifted you to do. If it's uh, sweeping floors, be the best floor sweeper you can be for the glory of God. If it's cleaning windows, clean the windows the best you can do for the glory of God. If it's uh, anything else, do the best you can do for the glory of God. But do it as God has gifted you to do it. Everybody's gifts are not the same. Everybody's, everybody don't have the gift to stand up and talk. Some of us are blessed uh, with the gift to talk. Somebody has told me one time, Brother Dan, you got the gift of gab. Well, it wasn't always that way, but I set myself some goals and I've worked toward it. And God has blessed me now with what some people call the gift of gab. I, I do know that I can stand up and just about talk to anybody anywhere at any given moment. I walked into a church one night and wasn't, wasn't prepared whatsoever. 
And my dear preacher brother walked up to me and said, well, glory to God, Brother Danny's here tonight. The Lord just spoke to my heart and told me he needed to preach. Well, I didn't go over there to preach. I went over there to hear some preaching. But I couldn't tell that man I couldn't preach after he'd done announced to his church that I was going to preach. So I picked my Bible up and didn't have nothing to preach on. But I had a whole Bible full of sermons, so I just opened it up and I took a text from John 3.16 and preached a sermon from John 3.16. Now, there was a time in my life that I probably wouldn't have been able to do that. But God has blessed me over the years to use the gift that He's given me. And, and He'll do that for you too, whatever it may be. And only you and the Lord knows the gift that He's instilled into your heart and into your life. There are some preachers who are great evangelists who have the gift of evangelism and, and they work diligently and they win many people to the Lord Jesus. Man, that's great. I always wished that I could say that I had the gift of evangelism. Now, I'll be honest with you. Sometimes I think that I'm a very evangelical preacher. But I've never been gifted to bring people to Christ like a Billy Graham here. Nobody else has either. But yet there's other evangelists that God has used in a mighty way. Uh, I think of Dr. Adrian Rogers. He had that evangelical thrust and won many souls to the Lord Jesus. And that's great. Use the gift that God has given you. Set your goals for the new year and use the gifts that God has given you to reach your goal, knowing that you can never reach it without God's help. Number four, plan now how you will handle failure and disappointment. Need to put a star by that one. Plan now how you will handle failure and disappointment. Because, listen to me, it happens. It happens. If Abraham Lincoln could stand before you today and talk and tell you, I wonder how many times he'd tell you that he ran for office that he didn't make it. But he didn't, he didn't stop. He just kept on running. And he finally got to the highest office in the land. He didn't give up. Plan how you'll handle failure and disappointment. Uh, install, listen, spiritual handles. Spiritual handles. My granddaddy used to plow an old garden with a push plow. Anybody remember the old push plow? Now he, he'd plant a garden with an old push plow. He'd take those handles and he'd pull those things back and push, pull and push, plowing that garden. Get you some spiritual handles. Something spiritually that you can hold on to that'll be within reach when dark and difficult days come. I remember when a dark time came into my life. What a heart-rending time it was because I must confess to you that I didn't have my spiritual handles like I should have. And a dark time came into my life. But thank God there were godly men that God sent around me to, to pick me up and to help me to get through some very troubled times in my life. And I won't ever forget the Georgia Baptist Convention at that time. It's the Georgia Baptist Mission Board now. The Georgia Baptist Convention sent what they called their crisis pastor down to minister to me. I, I had a crisis going on in my life. I felt like I was just a little peon of a preacher, pastoring a little small Baptist church. But you know what I learned? All of the churches in the Georgia Baptist Convention was important to the Georgia Baptist. I was sitting at my mama's table one day and my telephone rang. And it was a man from the Georgia Baptist Convention. He said, Brother Danny, he said, are you going to be to where I can visit with you Thursday? Yes, sir. I'll see you in Tifton, Georgia Thursday and meet you at Ruby Tuesday. That's what he said. Dr. Robert Anderson. And I won't ever forget that dark time in my life that God sent a man all the way from Atlanta, Georgia, 
and he sat with me all day long, prayed with me, cried with me. And I won't ever forget the first words out of my mouth. I looked at him and I said, Dr. Anderson, my ministry is over. You want me to tell you what he said? He said, praise God, boy, now that yours is over, God's can begin. <laughs> now that was encouraging to me. I want you to know it was. Now that yours is over, God's can begin. Listen, get you some spiritual handles. Find you a special verse of Scripture. The Bible is full of verses. Find you a special verse of Scripture and claim that verse as your life verse. Do that. Find you a special Scripture. Let me tell you something. When you find that Scripture, don't just find it. If you've got a computer, type it up. Run it off. Stick it on the mirror, men, where you shave. Ladies, put it on your makeup mirror. And put it on your refrigerator. Put it on your cabinet. Let me tell you something. When we finally dismantled my mama's house because I moved back into the house with my mother when I went through all of my heartache, there was my personal scripture that God had given me. Still, One of them still still stuck to the side of her refrigerator. My scripture was Jeremiah 29, 11. It basically let me know that God still thought about me and that he still had a plan for my life, that he wasn't through with me. Find you a personal scripture verse that's rooted and grounded in scripture and place it in your heart and in your mind. And when times of failure and disappointment comes, your mind will automatically go to that scripture in your time of crisis. Number five, begin building spiritual habits. Begin building spiritual habits. Now listen to me. Anybody here got a habit? Anybody? I got a habit. A lot of people eat three meals a day. I was going to say that I eat one meal a day, but she stole my thunder. My meal starts at six in the morning, ends at midnight. <laughs> There's a lot of truth to that. We all have a habit of some kind. Uh, I had a fellow one time he mentioned his habit to me and he said let me ask you something preacher he said will that send me to hell listen there's not any of your habits that will send you to hell there's not but one thing that will send you to hell and that's not knowing the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal savior that's the only thing that will send you to hell but I want you to know something when God gloriously saves your soul he changes you want to be and what you want to do a whole lot of the time. Now, it may not happen overnight, but begin build, building spiritual habits. Just like you have your physical habits, begin to build some spiritual habits. Doing what you know you ought to do. Systematically schedule you a time to read the Word of God. And if you don't like to read, hey, guess what? You don't have to read anymore. Somebody will read it to you. If you've, got, if you've got a Bible on your iPhone or on your phone, I think it's version. Anybody got version on their phone? There's an application you can put on your cell phone. It's called version. And listen, it'll read the Bible to you if you don't like to read the Bible. Hey, you can go to the Bible Christian bookstore and buy a set of CDs if you've got a CD player. And I think you can even get a thumb drive now with the Bible on it. And somebody, and you know, these cars, these new cars have got these thumb drives that'll play. Let me tell you, you can stick the whole Bible into your car and the computer in your car, play the whole Bible. You'd be riding down the road and listen to Alexander Scorby read the Bible to you. So if you don't like to read, listen to the Word of God. 
Organize you a prayer list. Organize you a prayer list. And begin to pray for people every day. Establish a regular time for, uh, for prayer. Whenever you have the opportunity, in and everywhere you go, do visitation. Share Christ with somebody. And commit yourself to regularly attend the filling station. Be at God's house when the door is open. Number six. In this new year, dare to dream. Dare to dream. List the things that you would really like to do with your life if you just had the courage to begin to do them. Ask God to show you what opportunities that you'll be able to use for His glory. And listen, when He shows you those opportunities, don't sit and wait for somebody else to do it. He's shown you the opportunity. Get busy. Get busy. And then the last thing, number seven, seek earnestly for God's power to be obvious in your life. That goes right back to what I say every day on devotions that I post. Let others see Jesus in you. Because your life may be the only Bible that some will ever read. And listen, you get so much in tune and in touch with God that when you walk by somebody, they'll be able to feel the Spirit of the Lord. Let me tell you something. I would pray that our church can be so full of the Spirit of Almighty God that when people pass by on Gordon Avenue in their automobile, that they slow down at Gordon Avenue Baptist Church and say, you know what? Did you feel that? Did you feel that when you went back? Man, there's something. There's they something to that. Live your life in such a way that people will be able to see the power of the Lord in your life. Come daily to that point of commitment which enables you to say, Lord, I am yours. And I acknowledge your right to do with me and to do with all that belongs to me whatever will bring glory and honor. Listen, not to my name, but to your name. I'm going to remind you again, what we do is not about us. We're not trying to build a reputation for ourselves. We're not trying to build a name for ourselves. But we are trying to build up high the banner of the Lord Jesus Christ and let the world know that we serve a God who lives. And because He lives, we too shall live. Ask the Holy Spirit. Ask the Holy Spirit to fill you and to make your life a testimony that will be effective for witnessing to others. You see, we have to go to the filling station. When your car gets to running close to the E mark and it begins to spit and sputter, if you're not close to a gas station, what are you going to do? Walk. You're going to be walking. That's right. And you're going to be walking because there's no power there. Well, you see, this little body that God has given us to live in, 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 in is similar to that car in, in a sense. Because whenever we're not spiritually filled, when we're running on empty then we're not accomplishing anything for the glory of God. We need to find a place to where we can get our spirit filled. And the best place to get your spirit filled is in a church of the living God. Somebody asked me one time, said, Preacher, you got to go to church to get filled? No. But it's a good place to get filled. And it's a good place to fellowship with the brothers. I got filled riding around on the lawnmower one time singing Blessed Redeemer. You see, you can, feel, you can get filled any, any, any way as long as you get in the Word and you're search, searching and seeking God with all your heart. Ask the Holy Spirit to fill you up 
to make your life a testimony that will be effective in witnessing to others. Ask Him to teach you to pray in such a way that your life will be filled with His answered prayer. Just a few thoughts for us to reach out for in this new year. If we'll do that, I believe God not only will bless us numerically at Gordon Avenue Baptist Church, but He'll bless us spiritually to grow like we've never grown in the Lord before. Stand with me. Father, thank you so much for your word, and now I pray you'll use it for your glory, for Christ's sake.